This is 5.1.5 potential dividers. Potential dividers are simple circuits where you use two or more resistors or other components to divide up a potential difference and then you can tap into that by having another circuit connected in parallel to it. So first let's construct the very basic one. So we have a cell connected across two resistors. If this one here is a 100 ohm resistor and this one here is a 200 ohm resistor and we have a 6 volt cell, then we can tap into this circuit in parallel with the 100 and the 200 ohm resistors and divide up that potential difference according to the ratio of these resistors. So if we were to tap into it parallel here and another one here, then across that 100 it would get a ratio of 1 to 2, so it would get 1 third of 6, which is 2 volts, and the 200 ohm is a ratio of 2 to 1, so it would get 2 thirds of 6, which is 4 volts. Now the assumption here is that whatever we connect has a much, 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 much higher resistance than the resistors we've used to create the potential divider. Because if we have a much lower resistance, then the combined resistance is going to become less than the original resistor, and it's going to make a difference. If we had like 10,000 ohm res uh, of a resistance connected in parallel across that 100 ohms, then even if we collapse that 10,000 ohms with that 100 ohm, we're probably going to get like 99.9, .9, yeah, or 99 point whatever. So it's still 100 ohms, so it's a negligible difference. So, potential dividers divides up voltage into the ratios of the resistances. Put a box around that. Now, let's make some example circuits. So, we can do potential divider using variable resistor. So in this circuit, by changing the value of the variable resistor, we change the ratios between those resistors, and therefore we change the potential difference ratios of those resistors. So if we label this as R1 and R2, and I write here, by changing variable resistor, R1 to R2 changes, which means that V1 to V2 
changes. Yes. It's similar to a variable resistor, however it has a third connection on it, similar to a potentiometer which I showed in class last time. So this one's a variable resistor. All it is is it still has an in and out, but you just change the value of the resistance. So next we're going to do using real stack or potentiometer as potential divider. So for this next bit, it's similar to what we did before when we were looking at the Ohm's law circuits. So because the real stat, the potentiometer, has the third connection in the middle and it has a slider which allows us to adjust where we split the resistance from, we only need that single component in order to behave as a potential divider. So on this one, we'll say sliding the slider to the left increases are on right-hand side of our real stat. And this increases V out. Because the ratio on the right-hand side to the left favors more the right-hand side at that point. It's more resistance on the right-hand side. If we slide the slider towards the left. What is that? That says that's the other box. V out. V out. Sliding the slider. to the right reduces R on right hand side of our real stat and this reduces V out. Now, this setup can give you the full range of potential difference. So it gives full range which is from 0 to V cell. Now let's start a new page. And we'll write using semiconductors in potential divider switches. And in brackets, we can put sensing circuits. So 
So let's start with the thermistor. Now, thermistor, or what it would normally be called a negative temperature coefficient thermistor. So, NTC for negative temperature coefficient thermistors. have high resistance when cold and low resistance when hot. And I'll put here temperature, we're talking about temperature. This is opposite to what a conductor behaves like. So in this case, if we give energy in the form of heat, so we raise the temperature of the thermistor, because it's a semiconductor, that will excite more electrons to be able to conduct. And so you have more charge carriers that can move around. That reduces the resistance. So this can be used to make a fire alarm, which is different to a smoke alarm. So we actually use smoke alarms uh, these days. But a very rudimentary version of it would simply detect the temperature of the room being too hot and then ring an alarm based on that. So the fire alarm. trigger. So we set it up with a power source. Thermistor and a fixed resistor. And what we'll do here is, we will tap off of our fixed resistor. So this is V out. So, when the room is cold, temperature of of thermistor is low therefore therefore resistance is high and if resistance of the thermistor is high then the thermistor gets most of the potential difference from this circuit and our fixed resistor gets less potential difference, so V out is low. And it's important that we connect our V out across the fixed resistor. If we connect it across the, uh, Rio, uh, the thermistor, then when the thermistor is cold, we will get a big potential difference output already. And when it gets hot, we'll get a low potential difference. So we want potential difference to be low on the output when it's cold, and we want it to be high when it's hot. So we have to put it across the fixed resistor. When room has fire, the temperature of the room begins to increase. And it doesn't increase slightly, it will increase quite a lot. Now, a room to be between 20 to 25 degrees Celsius is normal. But a room to be 50 degrees Celsius, 60 degrees Celsius is not normal. 
So that means that the furniture, the walls, everything around you is burning. So when a room has fire, thermistor becomes hot. If thermistor becomes hot, resistance of thermistor is low. And if the resistance of the thermistor becomes low, then the ratio between the fixed resistor and the thermistor favors now the fixed resistor, so V out becomes high. If the resistance of the thermistor becomes low, then the ratio shift in the favor of the fixed resistor. So the fixed resistor's V out now becomes higher. And when V out becomes high, that triggers the alarm to start. Next, we'll move on to another circuit which uses an LDR. So, light dependent resistor. Now the LDR is also a semiconductor, but the LDR gets its energy by absorbing photons of light. So when given energy, light resistance goes down. Now the LDR can be used to make some simple devices. So you could use it to make a trigger for an automatic door. You could use it to be a trigger for a night light, which switches on when the environment becomes dark. So I'm going to start with the automatic door. So just like last time, we're going to construct a similar circuit. But this time, we're going to put our V out across the LDR, not the fixed resistor. Now, when no one is in front of the door, then the LDR is receiving a high amount of light intensity. So I'll, I'll reword that. So when, when no one is in front of door, Light intensity incident on LDR is high. If the LDR has lots of light and therefore we're giving it lots of energy, its resistance is low. So resistance is low. And if resistance of the LDR is low, then V out is also low.
Now, when someone approaches the door, they cast a shadow on the LDR. So the light intensity on the LDR becomes less. So the resistance of the LDR goes up. And if the LDR's resistance goes up, then the ratio now shifts towards its favor. And so V out becomes high. And V out then goes to the motors and triggers them to turn on and open the door. So when a person is in front of door, they cast shadow on LDR. Therefore, resistance goes up. And V out goes up. That then triggers the motors of the door to work. So that's if we want a low light intensity to trigger something to happen. So in the same way, if we wanted a night light to work, then we want the night light to turn off when there's lots of ambient light, so during the daytime, and we want it to turn on in the dark. So when the resistance of the LDR goes up, so we'll set it up in exactly the same way. And what I'll do here is I'll put automatic door slash night light. For what? Well, it depends. In this, in this particular situation, if the resistance of the LDR is low, then it's going to have less potential difference. Because you have two components here in series with each other. So the voltage splits up according to their ratios. The fixed resistor never changes. So if you increase the LDR's resistance, then the LDR will get more voltage than it did before. If you decrease its resistance, then the ratio shifts towards the favor of that resistor, the fixed resistor, and so the fixed resistor gets more voltage. The sum of the two voltages is still equal to the voltage of the cell, or the voltage of the power supply. And that is the end of 5.1.5.